Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing one of the best new watches and best new movements of Basel World 2014. This is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Flyback Chronograph, and it is a flyback chronograph dive watch. 43 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel. It's 14.9 millimeters thick and from lug to lug, 49.7 millimeters and 52.5 millimeters end link to end link. There's a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs and this watch is unconventionally equipped with the super premium and nearly indestructible Bathyscaphe factory bracelet. Throwing it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it has undeniable presence. It's not excessive thick for the amount of complication and water resistance, so I consider it perfectly suited to a jacket cuff, if not the tightest of dress sleeves, and it's not excessively broad across the wrist, so I can recommend it for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger. It's a big watch, but it's not a huge watch. Taking a quick look at this bracelet, it's the standout feature because we've seen the Bathyscaphe Chrono before, but we've rarely seen it on the factory bracelet. It's an interesting combination of asymmetrical intermediates, large and small links and double hinges so that there's a lot of movement from link to link and within the links. So it feels like it's a small link bracelet even as the profile appears aesthetically quite chunky and butch. Taking a look at the bracelet assembly, you can see taking a page from the book of Zinn, we have hex screws used for removable links. Note the use of smaller removable links. There are primary large and then intermediate sized links so you will be able to get the right size. The use of the hex key screw is to allow the use of higher torque when fixing the screws in place without rounding off the heads as you would on a conventional flathead and as many boutiques often do when sizing bracelets. The hex screws make that hard harder to do. Taking a look at the clasp, you'll appreciate that it is a double fold with twin trigger release internally media blasted and satinated, quite solid and well made. Close it, lock it, and you have security. Press the twin triggers, it pops open. It's going to open when you want and not when you don't want. The tolerances of the bracelet, impressive. There's not a whole lot of side-to-side -side play, although it does have a rather fluid and silky feel. You can also appreciate that from the bottom, especially when you view from this angle, there are big gaps between the links to allow the bracelet to vent the wrist on a hot day. The Bathyscaphe has been the somewhat more retro-inspired 50 Fathoms. As you can see, it uses a no-guard big crown profile with squared off lugs and then a little transitional bevel and a sheer case band. This is an older era of 50 Fathom style, whereas the 5015 is more of a unapologetically modern take on the 50 Fathoms. This design looks back to the 1950s. Now that big crown is a screw down and the whole thing is 300 meters water resistant. You also note the attention to detail here is the pump pushers themselves have a very small bevel on their transitional surface between their heads and their size. Again, I like to see that sort of thing. We have satination of the knurling on the bezel. It is a very chunky and positive 120 click bezel with a scratch resistant ceramic insert, sapphire crystal, sunburst anthracite metallic dial base. We have baton style hour and minute hands, a lancet style counterweighted second sand for the chrono, lollipop style for constant seconds. Then you have chrono registers for minutes as well as hours. As I mentioned, it's a flyback chronograph, so you can reset it and restart it with just one push of the trigger. We have applique indices, and then we have both a quick set for the date and hacking seconds so you can set the watch precisely to a reference time. Turn it all over. Party in the back. Caliber F385, based distantly on the 1185 Frédéric Piguet. This watch has features that the Frédéric Piguet does not have, such as a silicon hairspring, a full balance bridge, six position adjustment, 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate, hacking seconds, all that stuff you don't get on the standard Piguet 1185. So this really is its own movement. It beats away at 36,000 vibrations per hour El Primero style, and it has a free sprung balance with a full dual anchored balance bridge for shock tolerance. It uses a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism, 37 joule movement, beaten away at 10 beats per second and adjusted in a chronometer busting six positions. As chronometer is five position adjustment, this is actually six. And if you look at the rotor, which is 
18 karat gold. You can see it has media blasting on its center. There's a satin channel that runs around its edge, and then there's a mirrored bevel on its absolute side. You can see that same mirrored bevel on every layer of the bridges of this movement with black polished screws that feature chamfered slots and circumference, and a handsome spiral satination that fans out across the bridges with engine turning on the base plate. Aesthetically, this is a very impressive movement, a judicious blend of hand finishing and machine finishing that's actually more convincing than you'll find on, for example, an Audemars Piguet 4401 chronograph caliber. Very impressive stuff technically and aesthetically here. Reach out to Timasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the Bathyscaphe chronograph by night.